And welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the monastery, the open bar of the internet, the world's greatest shit show, and the place where we, the good brothers and sisters of this most holy of temples, seek enlightenment through the drunkest, craziest, and most batshit ways possible. I am your one and only gaming monk, better known as Mildra, and with me I have a newcomer to the temple, creator of the upcoming novel, Confaga, Roots of a Very Old Tree. A man who loves his whiskey as any good as any good gentleman of society should. Jean Paul Badjo. How you doing today, man? No, like that was like the best <laughs> that was the best interview I think I've ever had. Not interview, but <laughs> intro. <laughs> Damn, bro. That was the closest I can do without getting sued by the Buffer family. Uh, dude, that that was that was incredible. <laughs> I felt like a real person. <laughs> uh, so a bit of a, a bit of a tradition around here, aside from the rampant drinking, is the humble beginnings, in a sense. So, what I'm so what I'm curious about in your case is what gave you the what gave you the proverbial bug to start to start writing in general and <clears throat> um, writing fantasy in particular. Well, that's a uh, that's a great question. Okay. Uh, what made me start writing was how much I love video games, right? So my parents are from West Africa, um, country called Togo. Nobody ever heard of that. Uh, sounds like an Italian recipe. Oh, my God. Uh, that's what I've been told throughout my entire high school life. <laughs> I'm, but, I'm, then I am disappointed in your high school life because no, because nobody confused that with Toga and asked if you are going to do a Toga party. Some have, but only when I went to college. <laughs> That's well, where you're like, oh, of course so it happens in college because everybody in college has seen Animal House. Ah, uh, yeah, and just wants to drink and fucking party and yeah. <laughs> but that's 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 the that's kind of like the background, like my Africanness. Mm -hmm. So if you know anything about African parents, they're very much they're very much, you know. Go to school, you know, be good at school, get a job, be good at your job, uh, become an engineer, lawyer, all that type of stuff. Mm -hmm. And the issue was, I was much more of a of a creative than I was like a scientist type of person. And uh, throughout my life, throughout uh, my entire life, I started drawing comic books. Uh, I I found out that I'm a pretty decent drawer um, artist early on, mm -hmm. but so I started drawing comic books and stuff like that. So actually, uh, the book that I'm pushing right now is the same comic book, but like developed since I was seven. And I still have those comic books now. Uh, but I was so into the arts and everything that I really got into anime. Uh, I really got into just cartoons. I really, I really got into video games. Uh, and uh, my story I have now start off as a comic book that I wanted to turn into a video game because hmm. I always wanted it to be a game. And you can kind of see that in the the magic system I have in the book is like an, uh, an evolution of the battle system I had. But that's that's what did it because when I went to college, uh, I ended up being an engineer. Right now I'm working towards my doctorates for electrical engineering. I have a year left. And uh, most depressing time of my life, but you, know, <laughs> you got to do it. But I wanted to do, I didn't want this to go to waste, right? And so that's why I decided to write it because, you know, writing doesn't cost anything. And uh, you can do a lot with it. And there was an interview with George R.R. R. Martin where he was like, because George R.R. R. Martin, he did like a lot of, uh, movies and TV shows before, and he said that what he liked about writing is that you don't need to factor in a budget. So, and this is the same with the kind of video games, because you can kind of just write whatever you want, and you can make anything as grandiose as you want with just like kind of some movements of your fingers, and, uh, you know, get it to be. So, that's, that's what ended up happening. I didn't want it to go to waste. I didn't want my creativity to go to waste. Uh, and we know, I don't know if you ever made an engineer, we're basically we're basically homeless men who know how to function, kind of. Uh, and I, did, yeah, and I didn't I didn't want the creative part of me to kind of go to waste. Yeah. So that's that's a lot of what it was. I always wanted this to be something. I've been working on this story since I was literally seven, mm -hmm. and uh, that's that's kind of what inspired me. And you know, 
my my parents just wanted me to be in the science, but I was more of an artist, so I didn't want to let go of it. And so yeah, that's how that happened. Since you since you brought up mm -hmm. since you brought up um getting into getting into comics at an early age, um, <clears throat> what what turned what turned you in when it came when it came to comics? First off, and second off, because I'm legally required to ask this anytime someone brings up comics and they happen to live in the United States, are you what? The question of whether you're a Marvel guy or a DC guy. <laughs> okay, I'm a Marvel guy. Uh, I don't. I think that's a pretty lame thing to be. But Marvel comics make me feel happy because they're like, not that they're more basic, but they just kind of make me feel good, right? And uh, the way I got into comics, so I have two older brothers, mm -hmm. yeah, and a twin brother. But my oldest brother got me into mangas. My second oldest brother got me into American comics. So, well, one was like, show me Dragon Ball Z and, uh, you know, the earlier one pieces. Mm -hmm. My other one was getting me more into uh, Spider-Man. And uh, I continued that until I, I, until I grew up. Mm -hmm. But, yeah, but I, I, it was the, the imagination of both of those was a big inspiration, but it's like, so let, let me talk about Marvel now, because they had a series where I think, uh, I forget what it was called, but it's when Doom decided to become a good guy. I forgot the name of the series. When who, uh, who, I own who, it, but have you read that? When who decided to become a good Doom? guy? Doom. Doom. Uh, yeah, I, that's, uh, that's, that's happened off and on th throughout the, co throughout the comics, especially when one of the big claim to fame with him is, him being the ruler of a country. Okay. Well, okay, I can see that. Mine was more from what from what I'm talking about is more recent. It's like maybe five, six years ago, where he essentially just got bored of being a bad guy and he did everything he could do as a bad guy, and uh, he decided to be a good guy. Mm -hmm. And I found that to be so fucking cool. <laughs> like, so he's just like, I, right, I did everything. And all the superheroes aren't accepting him because this is like you can't just you can just fucking decide you're gonna be good now just because you're bored. That's like the stupidest like that's what they're saying. Like it's like the stupidest motivation. He's just like I just want to see if I can do it. And he ended up being better than like most of them. And that's one thing I found I found real cool. But like Marvel is just like much more lighthearted. Mm -hmm. And you know when you're studying, you know the things I study and like every day your professor's telling you you're a piece of shit and you're just like not good enough and. I didn't. I didn't need to read like Batman shit, where you know his city's being attacked by kaiju's and everybody's dying. And everything's like kind of sad. I, I wanted that that release of just you know things are good. Yeah. Like, um, yeah. And it's fun. It's it's funny you mentioned that because the the idea of Doom deciding to be deciding to try and be a good guy out of, out of essentially boredom is a very do is still a very Doom thing to do because. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Doctor Doom's whole his whole shtick is pride. He, he's do, he's Doom, and Doom is better than you. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, and that was that was so cool. Like I was like, oh fuck! And not only that, it's so it's actually like really funny. Like that that series is it's he's just he's OP at what he does and everything that he does. Nobody can stop him. There's a part where she's like one of the people from Shield is. This is like you stop or I'll arrest you. And he's like, don't make jokes. Don't you know you can't arrest me? What are you doing? Like, what are you doing here? Mm -hmm. And uh, I found that really cool. I like I like that personality that that he had. But like, yeah, that's the comic book. Mm -hmm. And so, I'm, I'm, pres I'm presuming that I'm pres given given the way you've spoke the way you've spoken about it and the and the fact that you mentioned Spider Man as your introduction. I'm guessing you grew up in the '90s, so. You, so, yeah. um, you leaning more towards Marvel ar around that time makes a lot of sense to me. Oh, okay. since it was around it was around that time that Marvel was ab was absolutely killing it. Um, yeah. DC obviously had the stronger IP IP at the time, but in terms of making money purely as a comic book, um, Marvel wa Marvel was making bank. Of course, there's also there was also the issue of of all the of all the stuff with the speculator boom, but that's a whole other um, rabbit rabbit hole. Yeah, that's the, that's way above my pay grade. 
<laughs> yeah, I don't, I don't know the history of comics like that. I just, uh, I just like to buy comics here and there. Uh, but the, but the, um, when it comes to the, when it comes to the, when it comes to the um, video game part of it, um, since you mentioned that, that does, that does bring some interesting parallels for, for me when I, when yeah. I looked at, um, Confaga. Um, I'm going to go out on a limb here and guess that one of the vi one of the video game inspirations that um pr that prompted this kind of thing was one incarnation of 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 um either Final Fantasy or The Legend of Zelda. Absolutely. I could uh absolutely absolutely fucking lutely. I would It's. I'll go deeper with the Square Enix games, and then and probably if, if you want me to, and then even oh, okay. Zelda. Because as a kid, oh wait, go, go ahead. Uh, oh, well, read. Go right ahead. Go right ahead. Tell me to go ahead. Yeah. Okay. So I considered myself a big gamer, like a very big gamer, mm -hmm. until I don't know until maybe four years ago, where um, where I got really busy and stuff. But I used to play video games like, you know, the Mario games, the Nintendo games, all the time. Mm -hmm. um, maybe Game Boy Advance, where they had Final Fantasy 1 and 2, Dawn of Sorrow, I think, I think they have any right. Where the first one was fantastic, mm -hmm. it was a good story. And then number two was the first video game I've ever played that had a deep story, like a very fucking deep story where, you know, people were dying and people cared about each other. And I was like, whoa, like and it, it do, blew my fucking mind. I do have to, I do have to, interge I do have to interject slightly <clears throat> on this because when you're referring to two at that time, American two. Yeah. In that case, that'd be four because, and it's one of the, it's one of those things that I, that I always have to make, I always have to make clear. Um, uh -huh. because because uh, obviously um the the original two and three didn't uh, didn't hit shores until until the um 2000s the so late 90s okay. so the so number number four with i think lunith right what number is that originally um f four with um uh, f four was with um was with cecil kane Rit ridia and, and company okay cecil shit Dude, I'm okay. Then who's? I thought Lunith was a character. You no. Um, there. I believe there. I believe there was late later on, but as far as as far as one of the primary characters, um. No, oh, really. actually, no. Lunith is from three. I think Lunith is from three. Yeah, that that yeah, is, okay. is a bit more accurate. And okay. um, th well, well, it's certain. Well, it got some. Well, it got fa well, it got fan translations over the years. We did we didn't really get a official version of three until the um, DS version. Yeah. Um, and I'm talking I'm talking about <coughs> these three, not the the three the three that was on the SNES. Obviously, is um six. Oh jeez, man, I can't keep up with this. I just okay, so I know that Lunith, mm -hmm. from what I, I I think my memory could be wrong. The version I played of Final Fantasy IV had Lunith on this on it. That could be wrong, but that's the one where you can get all the onion armor, right? And then you go to the moon. Yeah, that it, that would be four. Okay. Okay, that would be okay. That's the one I know to be four, mm -hmm. and that's one of my favorite ones. But the the one that.
but I'm just, I'm curious on no. this. <laughs> I want to know. <laughs> where, where? Because I, I do remember the name uh, Cecil or Cecil. Yeah. Uh, I don't know what game it's from. Okay, but, you know, I guess it doesn't matter. Either way, find Square Enix, mm -hmm. awesome company that really had a big effect. Yeah. Regardless. Um, and the other, th the, that, that does bring me, that does bring me to a few things. One of them is, um, when I looked at the, when I looked at the summary of Confaga, um, are you go, are you going with your own spin on the, on the hero's journey with the, with the, um, setup? I'm going on my own spin, yes, as in I don't want the main character to to feel like I want him to feel like the way the book is written, there's the main character, right? But I did everything I could to avoid tropes, as in, you know, he's the chosen one or all this stuff. I want him to kind of just be exploring the world where everything is happening and he ends up being something important. He he ends up finding his role, right? Uh which is, I don't want it to be chosen. Yeah. I and I do I do want to I do want to make clear make clear on something. Um one um a trope in it in and of itself isn't bad. It's 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 when it's used poorly that that there's the issue. And yeah. Two, um, yeah, I agree. The hero's journey doesn't necess necessitate a chosen one. Um, that's that's a mis that's a mistake I see a lot of people make that here that hero that the um, hero's journey is a chosen one narrative. Not re not really. In fact, in a, and I do I do think that a lot of people have misinterpreted the whole chosen one narrative, largely because of a lot of people using it very very poorly. But you, but you look at. I get. Good. Oh, sorry. Like I, I get what you're saying. Mm -hmm. But the thing, what I was trying to do is, I'm trying to do things people haven't seen before. Yeah. Even if it's a good thing, because again, I watch, I watch, uh, I watch a fuck ton of that. I watch a, uh, I read a lot of comics. I read a lot, and I, one of the things, especially this season of anime, which is a very nerdy term to use, I guess, or I guess. You're in you're in a podcast nerdy. run by nerds. <laughs> uh, but it's it's a weird term to use, but like a, a nerdy way like a lot of animes don't do it for me anymore. Like, no matter how great they are, I think I've seen so much or it's just like I can even when I'm watching let's say Netflix and Marvel, it's, it's like I can guess what happens. Not even just like on on like Crunchyroll Funimation shows and things like that, all one by song. But things have become so predictable to me because I have consumed a lot of media um, that I was I was kind of trying to pick the best parts of what I liked about the things I was consuming. Mm -hmm. Really try to make something that people have not seen. Where and that goes into that goes into a bunch of like things I like about the book uh, that I think makes it unique, mm -hmm. but. I really tried my hardest to do something original. Like, again, this has taken me... I've been writing this since I was seven. And then when I was a sophomore in college, uh, which was basically... Maybe eight years ago. Um, I'm 28, by the way, everybody. Uh, I was... I, w I was really trying to do something that people did not see. I've been compiling things. I've been working on it. I've been trying to make things as unique as possible, even with the characters, mm -hmm. the the magic system, the the scenarios they get into, and even make. I do make fun of a lot of uh, a lot of tropes, not just in like anime and like you know mangas and just stories in general. But I do when something happens and then you can kind of see where things are going. I completely kind of fuck with it. I'm just like, yeah, I know you think this, but that's not what's going to happen. Mm -hmm. And uh, I lead towards it, and person's reading it. And when I've had people like read the book and stuff, and they're like, oh, I know it, because I had like a chapter like uh, review with uh, people who are on my area. 
and they realize, oh, I know what this is going to end up. I know what they're going to And then at some point, it's just like, you know that I knew what you thought was going to happen, and I kind of just say, fuck you. But not in a bad way, like the last season of, Kingdom of uh, Game of Thrones. In a good way, where you kind of just laugh. Yeah. So that's what I kind of I go for. And something that something that I did that I did I did want to ask about when it came to this when it came to the setting the world of um of um Ka- of Kara um is the fact that is the fact that there's you talk you talked about a a split between the powers of science and magic what pr- what prompted that to be one of the major themes within the setting. And uh, it was when the Saiyans were in the, I think they were in a war with the Tuffle on the planet Vegeta that they were trying to conquer. Mm. And that was the first time in my life that I had experienced um, basically technology versus magic or raw power. And that was, at that time, that was one of the coolest things I had ever experienced. I was like, oh yeah, that is interesting. And so I wanted to, and if you read, one day, if the book ever succeeds and I get interviewed, I can like go deep into how anything has inspired me. Because even the Olenbrenga, which is Lunar Well in Kofaga, now Lunar is a language, right? Um, Lunar Well means Olenbrenga. And what my the inspiration for one of the biggest scenes in the in the in the story is actually inspired by Courage the Cowardly Dog, where yeah, <laughs> where there was a scene where a whale was eating a squid, uh, uh, like a space whale was eating a, a space squid, and then the squids go down to Earth and things like that. And uh, what I did is very different, but the core was the effect that that scene had on me when I was 10 or 9 or whenever it came up. And I was like, again, when and this is also around the time of the Final Fantasy II days where I was really being affected on an emotional level on these things that aren't books. It's like when I was starting to realize that these things that I like can be much more than just, you know, Mario jumping on a mushroom or Rayman, you know, fighting some guy in the lava. Yep. So, yeah. Um, but when, but speak now speaking of speaking of that when i look at when i look at a lot of the a lot of, a lot of the art that i that i've seen you that i've seen you do for this i do i do get a very um fairy tale vibe from vibe from a lot of it um and it's it's not something i can really put it's not something i can really put into words it's just one of those just one of those things that cut that springs to mind when i look at it and oh when you say fairy tale, do you mean fairy tale stories or fairy tale the anime? I mean fairy tale stories. Okay, good. Okay, because I've never seen fairy tale. Although my brothers may tell me to watch it, but I heard it's really bad. Yeah. Uh, go ahead. I, would, I wouldn't go. I wouldn't go that far. It's be be very care be very careful about what about what you hear. <laughs> okay. Is, I I will always I will always advise people to. Take a, to take a look for themselves on on something instead instead of um instead of ju- instead of just relying on secondhand, um yeah. But give but um given given the fact that you you mentioned that um uh, there's a lot of this is ba- a lot of this is based on the um t- the tales that the tales that your um, grandparents and and elders in the family had told as well as. Um, research into, into African tribes. Um, I'm curious if there. I'm curious if there are any stories in particular you can mention as that were that sort that provided a strong inspiration for a lot of the motifs you're going with. Ah, uh, yes, but how would I even translate it? Right, because if I do say so, before I answer that and. Uh, before I answer that, what, another one of the big things that inspired my story is Dark Souls, the series. Maybe one of my favorite series of all time. Mm-hmm. No, it, it is my favorite series of all time, the story that they have and the way it's laid out. I'm hesitant to answer your question because the way 
everything in the book is laid out. It's meant for people to do research and try to find it on their own, right? So if I give a story, I'm afraid of getting too much, too much information to kind of, to kind of get rid of the mystery. Yeah. But I, I, could, I, could, I could give some things, right? Mm -hmm. So I, I guess, yeah, I could give some. So Ole Mbrenga, you know, Lunar Well, uh, I don't want to, I don't want to say, you know, how the, even the letters in the word, it, it, another thing, the characters that actually call it Ole Mbrenga and the characters that call it the Lunar Well is part of the story. For people who are like very curious, it's, it's a very, very detailed, but every sentence of every character in the story is, it's a very tailored, you can actually, if you look hard enough, you can see the end of the book in the first chapter. I've put in a lot of hints, very subtle hints, but it's, uh, so th that's, that's how, that's, I'm not going to say fragile, but that's how together everything is. So one of the stories is the Olembrenga, uh, well, pronounced Olembrenga, and I don't even do the right accent, right? Because uh, I was raised in America, so I only speak French and English, and now I'm doing a little bit, but yeah. And it's, it's, about, it's a story about a big fish that does, that has lost its, its child and is looking for it. And you can kind of hear a cry at night. And there's, there's a lot of things that go into it. And I don't want to give names of those characters because you can tie it into some of the characters and kind of go back into it. But that, I think that was the biggest one because the moon and a lot of cultures seem to be very important, especially with creatures and things like that. Even, even the, the Dido Dogo. Well, I didn't say to my, that little really poorly, poor quality ad that I had. Um, the video you saw, mm -hmm. but even the Dedo Dogo, if you know what a Dedo Dogo is, you can, you can kind of, you could kind of like piece together what some of the things are. Yeah. And I'm lucky that a lot of African uh, mythology and culture isn't online. Although, you know, it kind of sucks, but it, for my goal, it helps. But then again, I'm only one person, so. It, it, it's it's more negative than positive, oh. but it's there's a lot of there's nothing is just based off of me just making shit up. Yeah. It's a lot of there, there's a lot of imagination in there, and I do kind of mix things in together. But if you if you find a piece, there's enough for you to be able to kind of piece everything together. Mm -hmm. if, if that makes sense, yeah. Um, and I can and much like in much like in the way that certain certain other works were kind of gateway drugs for me to um, research for research further into various topics, whether it be um, researching, whether it be researching um, Wuxia because of a lot of the martial arts movie as I grew up with, or researching Japanese history th after um, experiencing Rurouni Kenshin. Um, nah. Mine was Naruto. Naruto really made me look into you know, uh, a lot of their powers. Getting Uzumaki and the Uchiha and uh, their a lot of their powers with the that was it. I don't know how to pronounce it. The Tamois, Tamois, or... and if I'm talking too much, let me know. <laughs> no, uh, no work. I, I, I'm having a fun time right now. I'm drinking this whiskey. Yeah, you're a cool guy. You got a great fucking voice, dog. Mm. And uh, <laughs> yeah, so let me know if I'm talking too much. No, wor no worries, man. Um, but. I, but I could see I could see that kind I could see that kind of thing happening, especially especially since some um, there I've talked I've talked to I've talked with someone else in the in the past about how there's a lot of there's a lot of untapped potential when it comes to when it comes to um, mythos and and, fo and folk tales in par in parts of Africa, um, mm -hmm. and I will and I will admit a bit of a nitpick a bit of a um, not nitpick but annoyance that I've had is that. A lot of times when people um, when people utilize uh, myth African mythos, it's always the, it's always the same one place. It's all it's always. I know exactly what you're talking it's about. It's always the Niger Delta or or the or the Savannah, i.e. i.e. Northeast. Mm -hmm. 
you know, the closest <laughs> the closest spots to the to what's known as the Fertile Crescent. And yeah. well, there's nothing wrong with that on on paper. It's the, the you have the fact that Africa there's much is, more. is fucking huge. And yeah. That's that's the reason that's the reason why um I've exposed as many people as I can to the um to the, to the uh, to the underground metal scene I just dis I discovered that's in um, Botswana. Oh. Um there's a documentary. You 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 interviewed people from there or No, I this I have I dear god I wish. <laughs> um, but <laughs> I could probably find somebody for you. <laughs> but no, but but no, I it I just I was sent a, I was sent a documentary some time ago called March of the Gods that fo that focused yeah. on the, on this particular um metal scene and then I just started going down a rabbit hole with it. <laughs> Oh, I mean that's the way to do it, right? Mm -hmm. Something sparks your your interest, and you just kind of go, you go, you go ham. You, mm -hmm. Yeah. So. And the it's mu much in the it's much in the same much in the same way that um I remember when it came when it came to musical influence. I remember um I remember a bunch when I introduced the game Brutal Legend to a bunch of friends of mine. Um, that ended up leading them down a rabbit hole when it came to various bands. Um, I don't know that band. No, <laughs> um, Brutal Legend was a game that came out that came out a few years back. That was one. Okay. Of I don't know that game then. I just sounded like a complete fucking noob. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I don't know that game. <laughs> um, I'm sorry. It, it a lot of it was a celebration of of metal in ver in various forms and um it had a licensed soundtrack from a lot from a lot of bands some a little more well known than others um but i, rem I remember i remember defending the game because some people dismissed it since they didn't have anything from metallica or iron maiden which i knew was never going to happen because of how vicious their lawyers can get but mm -hmm. it's Jeez. but it goes back to just that to that allowing them to hi to highlight b highlight bands from the past and present that are are still in the same are still in the same vibe but were d were doing the were doing their own thing and pe and um, thus people could explore further on that. Um, but w now one of the, I've um I've dipped into into tr into trying to in into trying to integrate. Um, some some bit some bits of African folktale into into my own research, and one of the one of the big things that I one of the big things that I always um, see is is some degree of ancestor worship or or um so, or ancestors being a cr a crucial part of the structure, and. That brings me to the power system that's within that's within the book known as a ancestral yep. nanga arts. Um, yeah. Now, it's not uncom it's not uncommon for a lot for a lot of um, fantasy works to have their to have their own magic system. And how Brandon Sanderson has made has made has made that almost a meme in and of it uh, in and of itself with his stuff. But <laughs> I'm, but I'm. But I'd like you. I'd like you to go into the into the Nanga arts and how and how it kind of works. Okay, so Nanga arts is uh, <clears throat> it's actually pretty complicated because there's a lot of factors, um, and all of this is actually based off of uh, what my village believes in, mm -hmm. and uh, so. the The things that influence certain things, it's not me making it up. It's actually what like my tribe believes in, right? And uh, but the things that like I kind of connected to it, and because uh, you know, powers aren't like real or anything, but like there's certain things that affect your spirituality to your clan or to your god and things. So the system is based is is I don't want to say based because you can say a movie is based off of like real events, but the, the system is actually like real shit. Mm -hmm. But the so it, there's so much. There's so many factors that the first book doesn't even have all of it into it. because there. 
I don't know if you, I think, yeah, in the video I put in that I, had, I showed the Excel sheet that I had for everything, right? But it doesn't show like the equation side where everything's a factor, where your sex, your age, your mental health, like everything kind of goes into it. And uh, I'll go through the basics and then I guess I'll probably hint into certain things I'll allude to in, in the, the next books and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. But the way it works is you have your base stats, right? Um, and the, your base stats kind of, the, there's like a, there's a base for, let's say you're a girl or a guy. Some of your stats can be higher if you're a girl or lower if you're, you know, vice versa if you're a boy. Mm -hmm. After that, there's, so that, that the base stats, just, just base stats. You have your element. And one character that I find really cool, his name's Ryan, Ryan Tolentino, who's the bartender, where his, his power is, well, his element is fire, right? Mm -hmm. But just because it's fire doesn't really mean it needs to be something where people don't burn. It could just be a visual or a manifestation or something. Mm -hmm. But for him, I was thinking more of burning something out of your head, right? Out of your memory. So his power is, this is like a criteria where he has to ask you three questions and uh, you have to confirm. It can't be yes or no question. Well, it can't be yes or no. But he has to ask you three questions. You have to confirm the questions, shake his hand, and then a book comes out of your head as you pass out. It comes out like a fire out of the back of your skull. And then he can read your memories. He can read your stats. He can read all this other stuff. And uh, there's there's a reason there's a reason for all that, especially maybe in the third book. I get into like his ancestors and what they did to be able to get this power. Mm -hmm. But yeah, but it, it's basically the standard of the worlds that uh, Marcus is in, and uh, that is a mechanic. But also, I wanted everything to have a consequence. Because another thing that inspired me when I was younger was the uh, JoJo series. I don't know, you know the JoJo series, right? Oh, oh, <laughs> oh, I know. Oh yeah, boy. <laughs> Believe me, I know. JoJo is a yeah. Okay, good. JoJo so is amazing, one... and Araki does not age. <laughs> he doesn't. Yeah, you're right. And uh, and he doesn't forget either. I don't give a fuck what anybody says. <laughs> the man is a god, mm -hmm. but uh. One thing I did take from him is how he names the powers, where, you know, all his powers are named after a song. Mine are named after an idiom, right? So the character I just talked about, Ryan, it's a Don't Judge a Book by its cover. And it's a great way to think of powers. It's a, I recommend everybody to, like, think of powers based off of, like, something that already exists and try to make it work. It is the best way to think of create, creative things. And... Uh, so that's that's like the very basicness of how the system works. Mm -hmm. But even a person's intelligence is not just one stat. It goes into IQ, their age, and their experience, mm -hmm. right? And not only their experience, but I say their experience in life and their experience in fight fighting. Mm -hmm. So, and I do have all, I actually have written equations for all of this. Nothing is pulled out of my ass. Yeah. Just, not just... Because, you know, I'm, I'm a try hard or anything, but it helps me stay consistent to know what people can do to not piss off other people. Yeah. Uh, one thing I hate about, I love One Piece. One thing I would hate about One Piece is the inconsistency where people could kind of just do things out of nowhere and just like, oh, can't do that. But, yeah. you know, whatever. One Piece is the, ex is the embodiment of, um, fl of flying by the seat of one's pants. Um, yeah. And when it, when it comes to when it comes to consistency, something that I remember I remember a I remember someone talk someone um, talking about this at one point, where they were going into the importance of having a series Bible. You know this this um this book document what have you that cont that contains the ma that contains the major characters, the rules of the setting, where th where things are at the start, where they're supposed to be going. All, all that stuff to make sure that there's this universal um, fallback for everything, and I th and I think I think when it comes to when it, com when it comes to any any sort of medium that's meant to have a consistent set setting, 
not just a consistent story, but a consistent world that it that is taking place in, especially if that world is mm-hmm. rem- is in any way removed from our own. These things ha- these things have to be maintained. Um, yeah. Now one one thing. So it, it helps me for the fights and stuff. Yeah. Where a, lo- a lot of the characters, I'm just like, okay, in this scenario, they can't do this. So if I know that somebody's intelligence, if even though the person's dexterity is based off of like maybe four different factors. Mm-hmm. There's like reflexes, there's balance, there's uh, being it your your senses, and I have a stat for all the senses, where there's sight, smell, touch, all that type of stuff. Mm-hmm. And so I kind of, I gauge it, everything has a value. And then I do have, I have an equation and a probability thing, because I do also have a probability factor where when, it, when I'm writing the fights in the book, I go into the, but the equation I wrote on my PyCharm and PyCharm's for like Python code and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. And I say, I kind of type in this person does this and the probability of success is this. This is how much damage it would do. And everybody actually has a health bar. Everybody has an MP bar. So they can't kind of do their OP powers all the time. Mm-hmm. That's why I have the special attack. Yeah, the special attack bar. Uh, and the and the vitality bar to kind of see how much MP an attack does and uh, how much it takes away from their max MP bar. Yeah. And oh. so the entire fights are kind of based around. It. So I try not to do anything that's kind of bullshittery. All right. Um, one thing that one thing that I was curious about is the use of elements. Um, yeah. Now. The spread of elements, I, I've seen multiple interpretations, whether, whether it be whether it be in classical works or in more contemporary works. But what I'm curious about is, are you are you using the? I'll start I'll start with the obvious question: Are you using the Hellenistic for four or five? If you if somebody wants to be pedantic, um, elements for your, for your particular setup. Uh, Hellenistic, you mean as in the basic shit? Yeah, the the uh, the the Hellenistic elements, as as we all know it, as people know it, are the is the kind of four elements set up that you that you might see from the Greeks or from the earth from the first generation of alchemists. It's oh. te- it's technically five, but most people see it as four. You know, fire, earth, water, water air. The fifth being um, aether. Um, okay, no, no, I am not. Absolutely not. Um, I am you. I use nine basic elements, um, and uh, if you using... the the elements I use. Actually, go ahead. If you're using if you're using nine elements, the the um actually the close the closest thing I can think of with it, with with a number that high is the um is the elements that are that are um that are used in the, in um in Chi- in Chinese alchemy. I don't know Chinese alchemy. What do they use? Well, there, there, there is the, there is the five, but there, but there is a eight, there is a eight element approach that, that add, that adds thing, that adds things like, adds things like metal and heaven. Um, I don't, ha- I don't have the full list in, in front, in front of me, but that, but that's that's one approach. But since you, since you're using nine, um, that one, do, that one doesn't fit either. So. I'd like you to I'd like you to go through the um, element list that you have and what, e- yeah, no what each one represents <clears throat> thematically. Okay, so all the all the elements this this will be a big bone, I guess, to the people who decided to do the research on it. Mm-hmm. But uh, if they if they find this interview and they're just like, ah, we found them. But so the nine elements are the the nine gods we have um in Confaga, mm-hmm. right and it, it worked out for me because i have eight siblings so i'm one of nine and then it kind of worked out that way mm-hmm. in a lot of traditions we did kind of match up with uh, me and my sibling. Yeah. so the first one would be energy or life energy or like the soul of the, that is the, the highest on the, the scale mm-hmm. second one would be nature third uh let me let me remember. It's I'll go down it and then I'll I'll send it. 
so there's soul or energy and there's um there's nature there is earth so like rock you know the basic rock stuff mm -hmm. there's wind and uh then there's there's i guess it would translate to shadow like darkness it'll translate to shadow night darkness that yeah kind of stuff. and then lights um photon stuff mm -hmm. not that the village knew about photons but it was like it it, it had its own thing and then <laughs> it's uh water fire and the lightning mm -hmm. those are those are the nine Oh. And each one does represent its own, its own god, its own story. And uh, the in the book, I do give the names of the gods that are associated with it, mm. um, and all, a bunch of gods that are associated with from other um, tribes. You got, you know, you have the Fawn, the Ewe, the the Yoruba. I think everyone knows Yoruba. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. So, th th that's what they're they're based off of. And you could actually go deeper because they actually do do a differenti differentiation between rivers, the river god, and like the ocean god. But I don't know that, that's a bit much for me. And uh, later on, you'll see that hmm. you'll you'll see the difference. But yeah, yeah that's the, those are the basic nine elements. Oh, well, one more thing. Sorry, I, I know I'm talking a lot, but you know I'm just answering the question. Mm -hmm. There is. The village elders do a thing with nine rocks um, on a full moon in my village. And uh, that is a story point. And for those of you who decide to look at the pictures, you might find somebody holding nine rocks that doesn't do anything and it might be a very big character in the future. Mm -hmm. But, you know, little, little hints. All right, I got gotcha. you. Now, what, now, um, something, something else I'm, I'm a bit curious about is, is in, re is in regard to the, um, not to the non-human races, um. Yeah. <clears throat> now, one. In the profiles that you had, that you had on the Kickstarter page, we have one example with step with um, Stephanie Gwen being a mommy wata, but. Yeah. What can you what can you tell me about the about the non humans? Is it is it a case where a lot where a lot of them look human but technically aren't, or or does it or are some of them going a little bit further past the um past that particular threshold? So everybody looking human is on purpose and a great eye on you. But... God damn, yeah. I didn't, I didn't know it was that obvious that people would ask that. Uh, maybe you're just a genius, but. Everybody looks human on purpose because I wanted them to be able to reproduce with each other, mm -hmm. which is another plot point. So, yeah, they, they're every, every race can reproduce with each other under the right circumstances. And then you do see that um, in the future. Yeah. But yeah, damn, dog. <laughs> I, yeah, nice eye. <laughs> yeah, I. I tr I try and do, I try and do as much research as as I can on it on on any given num. Yeah, you're a seasoned veteran. And yeah. I tr <laughs> and, um, I've because because of because of the because of the stuff that I do. Um, I've um gr I've gradually ended up um building a degree of ge of genre savviness. And, yeah. No, that, that was a really good question. Like, I, I, that's actually the first time anybody who's, like, you didn't read the book, but mm -hmm. even people who've read the book have not asked me that question. And, uh, yeah, I'm, yeah, that, that was a fantastic question. Shit, um, fuck. <laughs> I'm gonna need to make things harder. <laughs> yeah, in, in the, in, in, in some, I've seen, I've seen this, this particular, I've seen this particular motif in a, di in a different regard. Um, in a lot, in a lot of, in a lot of urban fantasy, you have, um, you have a variety of non-human races, especially any approach that's using some element of the fey, um, where, in order, in order to, in order to kind of adapt to the mo to the modern world, they'll take they'll take on more human appearances, but under the right circumstances, yeah. they might drop they might drop the act, um, which and. The, 
but give, given the fact that you're that you're effective you're effectively dealing with a character with a whole other world um that 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 particular approach wouldn't would one not work and two be ex, be um extremely wink to the audience kind of thing um yeah now when now i can see that when when it come one of the when i looked at the when i looked at the um stats for within within the um setup and which incidentally was one of my first cues that 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 um that i hope i'm, I'm worried this. i'm worried i'm scared now i think you're figuring things out too fast but <laughs> all right <laughs> um something i something i was i was curious about is as far as these stats go is god's favor um <laughs> I don't want to answer that. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to answer that. Uh, you'll you'll see a correlation to the characters who have a really high God's favor, mm -hmm. but I I I, I, I fuck you. Fuck <laughs> 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 you. But yeah, uh, that's uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Pay attention to that. The characters who have it really high. Now, <laughs> as far now, um, as far as as far as the book as far as the book is concerned, what are you shooting for as far as a total page count? Uh, ooh, page count. I don't know. Uh, I only know it by word. Uh, because I don't know how many words fit in a page, especially the size of the page. I do know I'm aiming for a hundred thousand words, which isn't that much more than the first Harry Potter book, because uh, her first Harry Potter book was like seventy six thousand. So it wasn't you know too big. Um, I know some people who read it in a week. I know some people who read it in a few days, but I also know some people who read it in two months. Um, but they're they're not really readers. Mm -hmm. But it's uh, I made it as short as I can, but filled in with as much as I could. Yeah. And uh, actually, the the original book was so the first book is a hundred thousand words long. The original book was three hundred thousand words long, which is as long as one of the you know the the long some of the longest Game of Thrones books. But so actually, the second book is already written because um, I was I had to like kind of condense everything, take a lot of things out because um, there's certain cities, there's certain tribes you don't visit, and uh, I put it all into the second book. But the first book is pretty fast. You should be able to go through it pretty, pretty quickly. Um, not not quickly. It's it's like standard uh, fantasy, right? Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, it's it's like standard fantasy. It might be shorter than you know the established fantasy, but it's not going to be it's not going to be horrible because I've gone through certain you know book clubs where I was like, yo, read this book, and they're like, we don't read anything that's bigger than this because you know they want their yearly book count to be a lot so they can say that they're registered. Yeah. But yeah. Now um one one trend one trend that I've that I've seen some that I've seen some authors take is providing a bit of companion material in the in the back end. Um this isn't necessarily a new a new thing either. There's the in, there's the infamous appendix section in um, Return of the King, for mm -hmm. instance. Yeah. Um, is that's is that something that you've that you've cons that you've considered putting it putting in like on the on the last few pages of the of the book? Oh, just, just... Absolutely. Yes. Of course. Yeah. Um. One of my favorite fantasy books is uh, my friend Amon. Uh, he bought me for my birthday is a book series called Mistborn, and I loved it. And uh, kind of got Naruto with where they're basically just fighting God. Uh, mm -hmm. Spoilers. But what he told me about it was in Mistborn, what they did was they kind of had a, like a separate appendix because I do want people to be able to do research, but I need, I would like them to know what to do the research on. So let's say, I don't know, uh, let me for that book. But let's say the Sasabon Town is anything one. Or Aido Edo is also another one. People don't know that those are things you can actually research. So what I try to do is 
the first time you see a word that you can research, <clears throat> you, I put an asterisk on it, and you know that's that's something that exists in the mythology, and uh, that's that's what I do for it to let people know that it does exist outside of my book, and I'm pulling from this lit. So, mm -hmm. so yeah, that's 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 what I do, and then in the back. Um, I have a list of all the names or all the all the words that could be looked up. Even basic things like fufu. Like some people don't know what fufu is. Uh, some people don't know what you know botokwen is. And I think where I'm from is called botokwen. Mm -hmm. And then where um, let's say if you're Nigerian, they're called puff puffs, right? Because they speak English there. Mm -hmm. um, so you, you can find all that. And it, it kind of goes into your earlier question where certain cultures are more represented than others. In this one, I try to represent a lot of people. Whether it's the Yoruba, which are you know the most known, I have the Kajala, I have the the Ewe, I have the Fon, I have the the Nauda, I have there's there's a lot of different tribes you can find here. So different terms for the same thing. Even Mamiwata is not a term that my tribe uses. So I have both of the names um, over there. So. All right, I, I can I can certainly get behind, I can certainly get behind that. Um, now, with well, with all of the, with all of that with all that um, said, um, I do want to sincerely thank you for taking the time out of your schedule and <laughs> de dealing dealing with both time zone hell and and the and um the length the lengthy arg arguments and me and me being probably a little too sharp for my own damn good no dude you're fantastic like i actually know if if this was if i ever visit minnesota i would like to go to a bar with you you're or, you're a cool fucking dude mm -hmm. so i had no problem this was this was absolutely great this is actually the first time i ever written, like did something with a youtuber mm -hmm. and yeah dude you're I mean, again, I'm not trying to suck your dick or anything, but this year, <laughs> yeah, you're you're fantastic. Don't let anybody tell you anything else. You're no. you're great. Well, and anytime you see fit to return, the door is always open. As I often say around yeah. here, drinking is not mandatory, but it is encouraged. I'm a fucking drink, dude. <laughs> I'm a fucking dude. And, and uh, I, I told you before that this podcast, and I don't know, I don't know if you edit things out or anything, but. I have a podcast. It's not up right now, but if you ever want to be on, mm -hmm. and I, I don't have, I don't have a quarter. Like I probably have like eighteen subscribers <laughs> to be honest, because I started like a month or two ago. Mm -hmm. But if you ever want to get on, it's not up right now, but you know the JPD podcast came with like I guess. Yeah. But if you look for it, it's not going to be there. So. Yeah. Um. Well, I'll I'll certainly um I'll certainly have that on. Have that under my under my considerations, um, yep, yep. and of course, a sincere thanks goes out to everyone who took the time out of their schedule to come on and listen to the madness at play here. And there will be plenty more where that came from, as there always is here on the open bar of the internet. But until then, on behalf of the good brothers present and not present, my name is Mildra. I am your gaming monk. Stay fucking frosty, everybody. <laughs>